Hey, everybody. Uh, uh, as he said, I'm Jeff Gibby over at Metastock. I'll start with just talking a little bit about, well, I'll start with the legal disclaimer because that seems to be everybody's uh, favorite part. So today's uh, demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading and meta stocks have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information in provide, or provided in connection with the company. So there you go. Hopefully, uh, I, I've been told I, I'll be able to see your questions. So hopefully, uh, I will be able to. I do want to encourage you to ask them as we go. And... Um, uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a brief introduction to me and try not to spend too long on it. We don't get a lot of time to together today, but um, uh, so my name's Jeff Gibby. I've been working here at Metastock at exactly, almost exactly as of March 31st, 23 years. And it, uh, we're, uh, we're a company based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, we have about 32 people in the office. Uh, it's been an, a fantastic company to, to work for. I started in Inside Sales. I, I then um, had uh, about uh, had a great opportunity to work with a lot of the partners that we work with here in the industry, and uh, people uh, that are really, really much smarter at trader trading than I am. Uh, and that's been a very, very beneficial thing for me. Right now, my uh, title officially is director of sales. So, give you a little bit of background. Uh, Metastock itself, uh, we just started in uh, the company started in 1982. Uh, when I started, uh, we were owned wholly by uh, Thomson Reuters. It was initially called Reuters. They uh, were bought, uh, they did a merger with the Thomson Corporation that was then Thomson Reuters. And, um, uh, and now it's Refinitiv. They, they, were, uh, they just sold the financial data assets of the business over to a company uh, and rebranded at Refinitiv. But um, it's been a great company to work for and uh, a great product to represent. Uh, one of the things that we do very, very well is data. Uh, the data products that we sell uh, and license, we do. We have some white labeled Refinitiv products that they spent a billion dollars creating. They're literally backed by uh, 2,000 real-time journalists in 200 different news bureaus. There's literally millions, I think, millions and millions of research articles in our real-time products. And so it's been a good company uh, uh, to be associated with, the one that I've been proud to be associated with. And I'm getting a little bit too long-winded, so let's move. <laughs> the one thing I do like to talk a little bit is about the product that we design here in in, in Salt Lake City. So uh, it's uh, called Metastock. Uh, it's designed and geared towards doing technical analysis. Uh, we're gonna be talking a lot and showing a lot of charts in Metastock. I wanna be really, really specific though. We've spent 30 years working on Metastock. You know, uh, the bullets here that you can read for yourself, you know, about scanning market or trusting trading ideas or, you know, our, patent pe our patented forecaster uh, the expert advisor, stuff like that. We won't really be talking a lot about, uh, but it is a tool that uh, with the, uh, that's been rated number one by the readers of stocks and commodities literally 25 years in a row. There's so many good ways that it can help you identify the right trading strategy, the right stock to use it on. We're going to scratch the surface, and instead of giving you like a really, really big, overview of, of the software, I actually want to kind of get really deep into one of my favorite models that's built into Metastock and show that to you today. And so today what I want to do is actually spend the 45 minutes I have with you talking about the RMO trade model, okay? And uh, so let's talk a little bit about what that what that is. RMO, just in case you're interested, uh, stands for the Rahul Mohinder Oscillator. Uh, this is uh, actually one of the very Actually, it is the very first uh, mechanical system inside of Metastock that I used to trade. I still look at RMO all the time. There's other things that go into my trading. But the reason I like to show RMO, uh, actually I have a full screen of reasons, but it's a very, very simple and straightforward method of trading. And if, if you start with one thing in Metastock, this is, this is a great place to start. There's a lot of good 
places to start, but this is a good one. So to tell you a little bit about Rahul Mahindra, that's this guy here uh, that you can see on the screen. He's a trader. Um, he's a CNBC uh, and CNN India contributor, and he runs a training company in India that all they do is train uh, Indian customers how, uh, or their, their students how to trade. And he's also been an avid Metastock user. He's been a, associated with the company actually for longer than I've been an employee of the company, which is pretty impressive. Um, he comes into our office and the kind of the story for how we got this method and why it's exclusive to Metastock is he was in our office over a decade ago. And we were like, well, show us, show us what you're teaching students. And he showed us this RMO model. And we liked it so much, we've basically got uh, purchased and acquired rights for it. And we include it in every version of Metastock. And uh, again, um, it's, uh, it's one of uh, my favorite uh, systems in Metastock. I still use it every day. The reason I like to show it to you is, is because Metastock is a massive tool. Uh, with this, it's, it's something that's pretty easy to use. If I do my job, you'll understand what the rules are. It's objective, so you're not trying to guess, you know, what, what a tweet is going to happen, <laughs> effect a, a tweet is going to have happen on your stock, or like what the new uh, pending Fed uh, uh, displacement is going to do to the market or, you know, what QE4 was going to do or the ending of QE. You know, what you're looking at is, okay, well, what is the stock doing? How is it trending? Um, and how is that going to affect the markets? Okay. I spent, um, I probably demoed this particular system more than 400 times and I'm not exaggerating if anything I think I might be under exaggerating that uh, I just got back from a tour of Asia where we showed it off in like Hong Kong uh, Singapore uh, I'm trying to think of all the countries I've been to Malaysia uh, we, I was even in Jakarta um, but what every time we go uh, to one of these countries, what we do is we say, well, let's look at your stocks. And I'll usually show RMO, uh, just so the same way I'm showing it today. And um, the point is, is that we're, it works on all kinds of different instruments. And it works on a lot of really good instruments. I do want to get really specific. And this slide was a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Um, uh, this is a trend following system. Okay, and I'm sure you've heard like the trend is your friend or befriend the trend or a rising tide lifts all boats, those type of, you know, it's they're uh, almost overused, overworn um, cliches, but uh, uh, this is a trend following system and, and that's what we're going to be looking to do is follow the trend. So I am not able to see chat uh, at this time. So if you do have some questions, um, uh, well, uh, I'll give you my email in case you want to uh, chat them out. It's unfortunate. Hopefully, if somebody's still there, they can turn on chat for me uh, or the questions screen uh, because I do like to look at this with stocks that you're interested in. What I don't like to do is actually kind of cherry pick a bunch of trades. We, I usually just say, hey, what symbols do you want to look at? If I can't see your questions, I can't look at the symbols you want to look at, though. So in any case, uh, we'll... we'll We'll pull the ones from the demonstration uh, that uh, we did two day on Monday for this thing. So, okay, back on focus, back on point. Okay, since it's a trend following system and since it's objective and since it's simple, uh, what we wanna do is a, as a, as a, our very, very first step, step number one, is we want to be able to identify what your primary trend is. Okay, that just makes sense, okay? So if we're gonna follow the trend, we wanna know what the trend is doing. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, is well, let's go ahead and uh, swap into Metastock a little bit. And this is what the uh, container looks like. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply a template to it. So I'm just going to right click on the screen. I'm going to go to apply template. And uh, a template uh, in Metastock speak is uh, just a collection of indicators, expert advisors, buy and sell signals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the, the template I'm going to apply is his RMO trade model. So you'll see that I have tons and tons of uh, 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 templates that I've created over the last uh, 20 plus years. I'm going to go ahead and apply this one. This is the one that Rahul made. So I'll go ahead and click on apply right here. And that will give us a chart, uh, the, the symbol, just so that you know that what we're looking at precisely is this is, is the Dow 
Jones Industrial Average. But it's not actually the index. This is the symbol for this is DIA, and it's the ETF that that tr trades and follows the uh, Dow Industrial Average. Okay, and. Uh, Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about kind of the steps to finding and trading with the trend on this thing. So uh, again, what I want to be able to do is identify what the primary or the prevailing trend is. Okay. Uh, when I say primary, I mean long term. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, short term in just a minute. Okay. We're going to look at both of them. So when we look at the long term trend, the indicator that we'll use with the RMO system is actually called this Rahu Mohinder Oscillator. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. We're going to talk about it. We're not going to, I was told uh, from my Monday's class, I spent a little bit time, too much time explaining these indicators. So uh, I'd rather err on that side, but I'm going to go a little bit faster today. Okay, the way you read this indicator, again, it's designed to look at the primary trend and it's either above zero or it's below zero. Simple. Okay, if it's above zero, uh, and in the case of the Dow Industrial Average, for the better part of uh, 2019, uh, since actually 1.16 of 2019, this has been above zero. Okay, before that, uh, it was down below zero. In fact, for that big anti-Christmas rally that we had in December, it was bearish or below zero. Okay, and I slipped exactly at what that means. If it's above zero, what it's saying is your long-term trend is bullish. Okay. If it's below zero, it's saying that your long-term trend is bearish. If I look at, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of move this into the screen right here, and I'm going to actually point out that there's a corresponding trend ribbon that shows up on this chart that says your RMO is bullish or your RMO is bearish. So it, this just lines up with that indicator. If it's above zero, then long-term, the assessment that you can make is long-term right now, the Dow is bullish. Okay. And so what does that mean? According to the way the Rahul teaches it, it as long as it's bullish, we expect the stock is uh, bullish. We, we want to go long. Uh, we certainly don't want to short into the straight of the market. So right now uh, we're bullish. Uh, step number one, if we're bullish in the market, we're not going to buy just because we're bullish. There's two more steps that we actually go through. But as long as we're bullish, what we're going to do is we're going to stay long in the market. Okay, or not stay long. We're allowed to go long. We're not allowed to go short, and it's not a trigger to enter. Okay, so that's step number one. That's literally what we're looking at. Uh, we identify that primary trend. In the case of the Dow Industrial Average, it's in a bullish zone, so we're allowed to buy. Uh, we're not allowed to short, and it's not a trigger to enter. Now, if we're looking back in December when the market was tanking, um, the Christmas rally, uh, we would have been bearish, and we just reverse the rules. If the RMO is in bearish zone, you're allowed to short. Uh, you're not allowed to long. Uh, it's not a trigger. Okay. I'd ask you if I have questions. I wouldn't be able to see them anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to step number two. And I promised that we'd look at the short-term trend. So right straight back to the chart. Uh, we started with this RMO indicator. We're, the indicator that we're going to focus on right here is what we call the swing trade number two. It's the pink indicator here. And there's going to be a few things I'm going to point out. Uh, they're very, very simple. Um, uh, and while I do that, I'm just going to change the line. Uh, color style of this blue indicator. So let me do that real quick. I want that to actually be a line. Go ahead and click on OK. I prefer it as a line um, for step number three. Okay. But let's talk a little bit first about the uh, the short-term trend. That's a swing trade number two or the pink indicator. Uh, you'll notice a few things because I'm going to point them out. It's pink. It's uh, uh, it, has a tendency to move and follow the market a lot faster than the RMO, and that's because it's using a shorter time frame or a shorter time span. Okay, you read it the same way. So if we're looking at it right now, uh, as of today, uh, short term we're bullish. Okay, uh, and uh, as we said a minute ago, long term we're bullish as well. So if we're looking at that, the first thing that we want to do is kind of take the temperature of the market, I think is a good way to kind of explain it. Uh, so if we're looking at the market today, we could say, okay, well, we're bullish long term and we're bullish short term. We don't have any recent signals to buy, uh, but uh, right now we're certainly not going to take a short position. We're only looking to take long positions. And we're going to talk in a second about how we trigger all those into the market. Okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, uh, go back to this this slide. Again, if it's bullish, 
long term and it's bullish short term we're allowed to buy it's still not uh, you're still not allowed to short and it's not a trigger now the one thing I do want to point out really specifically is if your long term or your primary trend is bullish and your short term or your uh, uh, short term trend uh, is bearish if they don't match you're gonna wait we don't want to trade uh, we want to trade strong trends we want to identify strong trends and we want to trade in the direction of strength uh, we certainly want to buy in the direction of strength. So if they don't, if they don't match, uh, there is a, a scanning. You could wait. Um, you also have the ability to scan for these setups in our MetaStock scanner. Uh, we call it the Explore, and it allow you to scan for opportunities. So now I'm going to just show you how to identify the trigger. Let's go back to the chart. And uh, I keep looking. <laughs> oh, I do have questions available. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right, so if you do have questions, let me know. Appreciate it. I, I promise I won't shut down this session. That's happened to me in some of the events we do, and it's it's not very comfortable. But now if you have, do you have questions, just let me know. I'm going to go ahead and let's go back to swing trade number two and swing trade number three. And I want to talk a little bit about how Rahul pulls signals out of this. Okay. So and how he gets the signals. Um, it has to do with the short-term trend, which is the pink indicator and the blue indicator. He's looking at the correlation between them, okay? So I wanna be really specific. We don't really care if the blue line, which is the medium-term trend, is above zero or below zero. It doesn't matter, okay? We've already looked at the long-term. We've looked at the short-term. What the reason and the way that we use this uh, blue line or this medium-term trend is we look for uh, what Rahul calls in the in the marketplace, he calls, there's a couple terms that he'll use. He'll call it a change of direction or a change of momentum or change of force. Okay, those are generally the three uh, uh, terms that he'll use to define it. But what we're looking for is kind of a, that swift of, or that shift of momentum. And uh, we're looking at the relationship between the short term and the long term trend to kind of identify when that happens. So, so to get really, really specific, let's kind of zero in on this part of the chart right here. Uh, uh, this was back in that December breakdown that we had. You know, everybody was, and I, myself included, uh, sitting there expecting, okay, well, it always goes up in the end of December. Uh, we always have a Santa Claus rally. Where's our Santa Claus rally? And we actually ended ha up having like a, like one of the uh, a massive sellout. I was going to say a historic sellout. I think that would be hyperbole, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't think it was historic because I think there, we did have the largest single down day on the Dow ever uh, during that time period. But uh, it certainly, we've certainly seen worse market corrections uh, from a percentage basis and more extended basis. So, but we during this whole Santa Claus rally uh, that we were supposed to have, you know, again, just to point out. We wouldn't have been looking at going long here. We're just, we're bearish long term and we're bearish short term. But that gets a little bit behind the point. Uh, after that happened, obviously the market started to recover and we went into an upward movement. We can look, we know this because we're, we've got hindsight on our side, right? Um, as the market started to rise, the swing trade two indicator started to rise. And when it crosses above, when the short term pink indicator crosses up, above uh, the swing trade number three or the medium term trend indicator, that's exactly the point which Rahul calls your change of direction, your shift of momentum, your shift of force, uh, whatever, however you wanna characterize it. Right now what we're seeing is, is a, a bit of an uptick in the market. You, we may be seeing that shift of momentum and that shift of force. When it happens to the long side, to the long side, that's bullish. When it happens to the short side, it's bearish. And the way that we illustrate that on the chart for you is if you look at uh, where those crosses happen, you get a bullish uh, buy or you get a bearish sell. Okay. So let's go back to the December example. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zero in on this real quick. And uh, we'll just kind of walk out through uh, how a trade, how you kind of go in and identify a trade. So we've been we've been bearish. We've just had a, a massive downturn. I'm sure you guys remember this. Um, we're starting to kind of we've set up this initial stop. It pulls back, it sets up a new low. Here you get the buy signal. Okay, so we get a, a, an indication that the market might be have exhausted this downward movement. Okay, uh, are we going to buy? 
No. <laughs> right? Because what we're where is short term, uh, uh, as you can tell, because the RMO, the pink line is below the um, zero line. Okay. You can also tell that by looking at the chart. Whenever it's bearish short term, it'll be a red bar. I forgot to mention that earlier. Okay. We're also bearish long term. Okay. So as long as we're bearish, we're not going to buy. Okay. And I know that a lot of you might be saying, well, hey, Jeff, why didn't we buy back here when the market hit the low? <laughs> like, like we're uh, we're not even going to be looking at buying here, but why didn't we buy back here at 209, Jeff? That doesn't make any sense. And I will reiterate the fact that what we're doing is we're trading a, a trend-following system, okay? Uh, there's a, a mentor of mine. Uh, he's retired now, a great speaker, uh, a really good trader. And his name's Robert Deal. And he would always come in and say, you know, barrels, bulls, if I can, if I can talk today, bulls will get, uh, bulls will make money, bears will make money, but pigs will get soldered. Okay. What we want to be able to do is identify when the market is trending up or down. And we want to buy into that strength or sell into that weakness. We don't want to be trying to pick up highs and lows. We want to be looking at stocks that have established a trend where people are buying into them and take good chunks out of that trend. So as a trend-following system, we're never going to get into the exact uh, bottom. Okay, We're not even going to get in right here because there is so much weakness in this downward that we're not even bullish yet. Okay, But if we kept looking at the Dow, uh, Right here is where we went bullish short term. Right, this particular bar that would have been uh, January 10th. Okay, and at that point, our temperature is maybe starting to change a little bit on how the Dow is going to start to react. Okay, it wasn't until the 16th, as we mentioned earlier, that we had that shift in momentum. We had the shift from the bullish short term and the shift to be bullish long term. So at this particular time. When everything starts to line up, that's when we can look to take a long position. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, and I'm, uh, nobody's asking questions, so uh, if you have them, I can now read them. Um, there's a few other things that Rahul is really, really specific about when he's taking trades, about how to go into the trade. So I'm going to kind of cover those um, in as much detail as I can. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the time we're doing okay, right? Um, so everything lines up here on this bar. This is the first time that we're bullish long-term and short-term and have that shift of momentum in our favor. This is where we're going to be looking to establish that trade, okay? Uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to buy right now. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the high of the bar for this day, and the high of the bar for the bar before, and we're gonna identify this is the higher of those two bars. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my horizontal line tool right here in Metastock. I'm gonna go back to where I was on the chart. I'm gonna draw a little bit of a horizontal line straight across, okay? If the price gets up above this level, that's the last confirmation that this thing is gonna start trending. If it comes into the uh, 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 above that level, I'm gonna go ahead and buy, okay? Before I do that, though, there's one other thing that Rahul is really, really specific and I think is important for you to be doing, regardless of whether or not you're using RMO or not, okay? And before you buy, the first thing that you want to do is say, okay, well, when am I going to get out of this trade, okay? And the reason I think that's important is, <laughs> well, have you? I don't know if you've tried to make that decision while you're in a trade and it starts going down and you're like, well, it's just a bit of a pullback. I'll go hold on to it. Or it starts to go up and you've maybe got 10 or 15% and say, hey, do I take money now? You don't want to be making those decisions while you're kind of in the heat of battle. You always end up making the wrong decisions if you're anything like me, right? What we want to do is have our game plan laid out. So there are a couple of ways that Rahul suggests that you can place a trade. Uh, the first one is the one I don't use. The first one I'm going to show you is the one I don't use, where you just use the lows of the same two bars. So you look at this low, you look at this low, and you put a stop right below this low. Okay. What I do uh, when I look to put a trade is I'll put it below a recent pivot low. Okay. 
And a pivot low is very, very simple if you're not familiar with it. What we're looking for is we're looking for a low that's surrounded by two higher lows. So if you look at this low here, this low next to it is higher, and this low right before it is higher, this would be your pivot low. In the case of the way that I put in my stop losses, I'd be using this pivot low. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that on the chart. Okay. And now, uh, so we're right here. If you remember, this is where we're at in the chart. I know if the price of the security go, or in this case, the Dow Industrial Average goes above 243, I'm going to go ahead and buy. Okay. I know uh, before I buy that if it goes down before below 237, I'm going to sell. Okay. There's a couple things that I really like about this as a methodology for the trading that you're doing. Uh, number one, like we said before, we're not making a trading decision while we're in the market, right? It's uh, a bad idea. Uh, number two, and I hear this all the time from traders, well, I don't want to make a decision. Uh, I don't want to put my stop loss there because I cannot afford to lose that much money. Have you ever said that to yourself? I have a little bit of news for you. I don't think the Dow Industrial Average or the people that trade it care how much money you can afford to lose. I just don't think it's a, a part of their spreadsheet, right? What we're looking at here in terms of like where we're putting our stop loss isn't based about uh, on how much we can afford to lose or how much we're willing to lose or how much we want to lose. What we're looking at is where did the support came in in the market and we're making a logical decision based on that. Okay. Is it something that's objective? Yes. Is it repeatable? Yes. Is it back testable? Can you go in and look at uh, examples? I do it probably uh, at least seven times a month with customers. We can go in and look at how these things work out. Okay. All right. Need to get off my soapbox. Uh, here, uh, so the next day, again, just to remind you, here's where we're looking at getting in the market. Here we get uh, uh, the next day it opens a little bit lower. It works up above, and here we get our buy signal. So as close to 243 as we can get with our broker, that's where we're going to buy. As soon as we buy, we go ahead and put in our stop loss. Okay, And let's just follow this around a little bit in terms of how it works. The market goes up a little bit, comes back down. As long as we're bullish and we're not hitting our stop loss, this becomes very, very easy at this point. So let's go ahead and let it be easy. I'm just going to kind of let the kind of trend speak for itself. Okay, uh, we do get a nice bit of a run. We had a nice run this year, right? Um, uh, get into March. In fact, uh, it just kind of it knocked down a little bit of time. We had this bit, pretty big pull back in March. Okay, and it was a pretty significant down day. It was enough to give us that shift of momentum down to the downside, right? Um, and when that happens and you're in a long trade, you're going to start to pay a little bit more attention. It doesn't mean you sell. You don't sell just because this happens. But we, because uh, the market does have a tendency to go up in steps. It, it goes up a, a bit and then it comes back down. It goes up a bit, it comes back down. So we don't want to just get out just because we have that shift of momentum. Uh, there's a good prop probability. Uh, there's a good prop possibility um, that it's going to keep going up. So as long as we're bullish long term and we're bullish short term, uh, this shift of momentum. Uh, just gives us a little bit of a warning light that we want to start to pay a little bit closer attention. Okay, if everything goes bearish on us, we'd get out. Okay, we do have a bit of a pullback here. Okay, it gets bearish for a few days, it comes back up, it comes back and gets bearish again. But this whole time we've been bullish. Okay, and we've got our stop loss in place. We're not worried about exactly what's uh, going to go wrong, and eventually the bulls take it over again. We've had a bit of a rally up recently in, a, in the early part of April, starting to give it a little bit back. Right here on the chart, uh, on April 1st exactly, we had a bit of a gap up leading into it, another bit of a gap up. This gap up was enough to give us a shift of momentum to the top side, okay, which put this buy signal on the chart for us. Okay, And now, uh, when we're already in a long position, okay, we're bullish. We just established a new support area. There's a couple things that we can do when we have this shift of momentum in, in, our, in our favor and we're already in a trade. And I'm going to be as specific as I can about the way Rahul teaches these, and he does a much better job than I do. But if we're in a position and we get a shift of momentum, the optional thing that we can do that's in our favor, again, um, 
the optional thing is uh, he does give you permission to buy more, okay? I'll be completely frank with you. I don't do that. I like to buy um, on the as much as I want on the first position and not try and stage in. I generally find uh, that, uh, and Rahul will say this in the classes that he teaches, this initial shift from bearishness to bullishness usually has the biggest move up, okay? So I don't like to kind of try and stagger in profits after we're already up about, uh, in this case, we went from 245. Right now we're trading at about, well, at the time of this we're trading, uh, the open was 261. We're still right around 261. So I don't like to do that, but you do have that as an option. The one thing that you don't have an option to do is you don't have an option of whether or not you want to move up your stop loss, okay? That's not optional. At this point, we're in a profitable trade. It came down and tested and established a new support level. Uh, we want to go ahead and set our profit target at the bottom of that stair, right? The market moves in stairs. See what I did there? Okay, and we do, we do it the same way. So you could look at the two lows and you could put it right here if you wanted to. Uh, I would, again, go with my pivot low. So right here you have a low that's surrounded by two lower lows. They stand out. It's easy to find them on the chart. I don't have to look too long. And now what I'm going to be saying is on this Dow position, if uh, instead of stopping out at a profit after I've let it go up, I'm going to I'm going to give it some room to breathe, but if it goes down below this support level, I'm going to make a profit anyway at 253, and that's the way it works. Okay, uh, what's uh, one or two things are going to happen? Is the market's either going to go up or it's going to go down? I am the king of obvious today, right? But that's the way that it works. Okay, so what we want to do is identify when it's going up and take nice good chunks. If this continues to go up. It's going to go up in stair step patterns. We're going to continue to move up our stop. And our ultimate goal is to take big steps out of the market. Okay. Uh, if we come back here, and I'm, we're going to look really quickly at a couple of other uh, stock examples, but, um, but we don't have a, a heck of a lot of time. But I do want to point out, you know, we've had a bit of a bullish run here. Um, uh, we've been bullish. Uh, from basically 237 to 261. Uh, my argument is if you're only looking to take long positions on this during that type of an up move, it's going to be already putting the odds in your favor. Okay. Um, if you're taking a down position here uh, during this rapid sell off and you're not listening to the pundits on TV saying, hey, where's our Santa Claus rally? That's going to be helpful for you. That's going to work out well for you. Okay, so let's look at a couple of different examples. We can kind of go a little bit faster, uh, and actually, we probably don't have uh, much uh, time for more than one, but let's just go look at, uh, uh, we were looking at Apple uh, the other day, um, and uh, it was a pretty good example. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. Apple hasn't been, as you know, uh, I used to show this on Apple back when Apple just went straight up. Do you remember those days? A lot of people would be like, well, I could just buy Apple. Why do I want to trade it? And I bet those guys uh, were either smart enough to realize that a trading methodology was a good idea or, um, or they know now that you know, stocks don't always go up. In fact, if we just look at, and we're not, I'm not going to trade by trade this. I just don't have the time in 45 minutes. But if we just look at where the RMO go, the major RMO, the first indicator that we were looking at, where it goes from bullish to bearish, uh, well, it went from bullish to bearish right here in November, right? Uh, at that time, uh, let's say that Apple was trading at right about, it opened at 209 that day, okay? Uh, went to a high of 210, okay? While the RMO was bearish, it went down, 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 okay, uh, ended up going bullish again at 167, okay? My argument is if we were taking a trade and we were moving our stop here and here uh, we and then reversing our position and looking for it to start to go up again, uh, well, being bearish and not taking any long trades during this whole time frame, I'm going to say it's going to be a, a smart move okay conversely in february it started to get bullish on us it went uh from about 
166 to uh, right at, at 200. Okay. And if you're only taking long positions and moving your stop here and here and you're still long, I'm going to say that that's going to be a beneficial move for you. Okay. Um, uh, again, one of my favorite systems. We, we just got back uh, from India uh, or well, India was one of the countries we visited, but we did a whole Asian tour with Rahul. Uh, we went and sat down with traders in all, in all kinds of places. It was, and uh, one of the things that we were kind of talking about um, was how we could better leverage Rahul because uh, he's trained probably, and I'm going to guess, and so I'm going to just kind of throw out a number here, um, but I think it's pretty accurate. And I'm going to ask him, he's going to be in the office on Thursday. I, uh, I'm going to ask him, he comes in every year. Um, but I, I, I'd, I'd venture to say he's traded, trained thousands of customers in India. He has been such a successful um, speak, uh, presenter and speaker and teacher. Uh, I'd also say um, that he's a great speaker and, uh, and teacher. Uh, I was talking to Kelly, who was honest with this trip, and I'm like, we we should really put together some stuff to leverage Rahul. He's one of our best business allies, and he can really teach people how to trade. And so we kind of came up with something. I'm going to tell you about it. So, But I want to remind you, Metastock, uh, uh, we just talked about a small part of it. We didn't talk really about how it can scan the markets for you, how it can test trading ideas, how uh, our, I just found out today we've got our patent on our forecaster, which is really cool. But um, we, uh, the real-time alerts, signals, it is a huge toolbox, okay? And it has been rated number one 25 years in a row. Uh, we decided, uh, because of what I was talking uh, about, uh, just a few minutes ago to put together some live training uh, that's available on a global basis with Rahul. Okay, and this is the first time that it's he's ever taught a global audience uh, uh, in this way. Uh, so what we're going to do is on April 23rd and April 25th, uh, w the time on this is actually 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we, I had a little bit of I should have updated this, but I want I want it to be specific. It's not noon like it says on the slide. It's 1 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be doing two live classes with, with Rahul. He's going to go through how to pick the best trades using Armo, volume integration methods, uh, his reversal strategies, understanding a multi-time frame trading approach. He's going to go through trade management. He's going to spend three hours doing a live class in a webinar environment just like the one we're in right now and uh, uh, really giving good education. Uh, in addition to that, what, so around that, what we've done is we've put together uh, really good options in terms of uh, giving you access to Metastock. So uh, with Metastock, we have two versions that are available. We have the Metastock real-time option. That's what RT means. And we have the Metastock daily charts option. Okay, And a lot of people will ask me, what's the best version for you or for me? <laughs> and I, well, I ask him, okay, well, uh, how often are you trading? Your scenario is going to be different for me. Uh, and, you know, it depends on kind of your professional thing. So, like, for example, I'll take me as an example because it's the best example I know. Uh, for me, you know, I probably spend 45 hours a week working, if I'm lucky, right? And sometimes that's a lot more than that, it seems. Um, and then I go home and I have between two and four kids. And uh, it depends on the day. Longer story. Won't get into it. But uh, for me, I could probably get away with Metastock DC. Be fine. Uh, looking at the charts once a day. I do like to have real-time charts. I like to look at them. Uh, but generally, I'm trading in such a frequency that real daily charts would be just fine for me. Okay. Metastock real-time, though, is what I use. Um, it's provided to me. And it's, it's actually... Phenomenal. I really enjoy having it. Okay. Normally, the Metastock real time is a one time license. It costs $1,695. Okay. And we do offer that with a 30 day money back guarantee. And it has also been rated number one in its price category by the readers of Stocks and Commodities. As part of that, and we didn't even talk about this much today, but we include uh, Zenith real time data feed. Okay. 
Now, Zenith Real Time, I had alluded to this in the very first part of my uh, conversation. Zenith is a product that was developed. Uh, they spent over a billion dollars developing it. Uh, it was developed as a direct competitor to the Bloomberg package. Okay, if you're familiar with Bloomberg, Bloomberg costs, I think it's twenty-three hundred dollars a month, but don't quote me on it. Okay, so that's available. It's only available in the real time, and that news is awesome. The ability, the information that it has is quite literally amazing. Okay, and that's included in the real time option. Uh, this package, we're gonna include that three hour training session I was talking about with Rahul. It's gonna include a home study course that we call Unleash the Power of Metastock. It's an online course that you go through. It includes a workbook. It's designed to help you get up and start running. And one of the new things that we started is we'll actually set up a white glove support installation call for you. So we'll have, um, we'll have you sign the initial agreements with the exchanges to get everything running. And then we'll actually have somebody call and they'll help you get everything installed. They'll make sure everything's configured. They'll make sure it's all running for you. And they'll also spend up to, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, they'll spend up to two hours with you actually answering questions. They don't always spend two hours. They generally put together appointment windows that are about two hours long so that they can give you as much time as is necessary. So um, uh, normally all of that is about $4,011. Um, the special pricing that we've got includes all of that. It's 2,500 bucks. That gives you a lifetime license to Metastock. Uh, you'll have Rahul's training. You'll have Unleash the Power Metastock. The only thing you have to pay on an ongoing basis every year is the real-time data. And you don't even have to do that for 14 months. We're giving you 14 months as part of that package. Okay? It's also a savings of about 1,500 bucks, uh, which is almost enough to give you, a, uh, to say, we could almost say that you were giving a free license to Metastock with all the discounts there. So um, the other option that we've got is the daily charts option. It does everything I showed you today, has the scanning capabilities. It comes with, uh, we're gonna, that's normally 500 bucks. We're gonna include a data link region of your choice. It's end of day data. It doesn't include all of the news, but it includes basically anything that you'll be interested in in your region. Um, they cover Reuters, we cover uh, Roy, uh, Reuters, or I should say Refinitiv now, uh, covers over 200 global exchanges. It covers uh, a lot of cyber cryptocurrencies. It, it, it covers Forex, it covers futures, it'll cover commodities. Uh, if it's not available in ref the data link package, I would make an argument that it's probably may or may not be tradable. Okay, and I'm literally going to be uh, uh, literally the only the only time we were able to get a data exchange that was asked for by a partner was uh, uh, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, which is about 52 issues. That's the only time somebody has asked me for an exchange and we weren't able to find it. So it includes the Rahul three hours of training, the Unleash the Power of Metastock, and that white glove support installation call. Uh, normally, all of that separately would be 1549. It's 897. So to take advantage, uh, it's a savings of 508 dollars, basically. Uh, to take advantage of that, you can go to metastock.com/365rmo. Uh, you can give our sales guys a call. Uh, we do have a great group of people here in Utah uh, that are very well versed in the software that can answer your questions. It's 800-882-3040. Or you can chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat. So um, that's really pretty much, I, I can't believe I'm about three or four, uh, three minutes early. According to my clock, hopefully uh, I got it corrected. Um, if you have any final questions, let me know. And uh, the other thing that I promised to give you a little bit of was uh, my email address. So I'm going to go ahead and do that if you have questions for me. Uh, I'd be happy to kind of help you with them. And um, it's just, it's my first name, uh, which is Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y. I'm typing this as I talk about it, dot Gibby at uh, metastock.com. Okay. Uh, and that should have, ooh, I just sent it to the, let me try that again. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, if you could pass that along. It doesn't look like I have the ability to send chat out. Um, or send a, a message out if you can send jeffrey.gibby at metastock.com. Uh, I'll close just by saying, you know, I've, I've 
uh, we've <laughs> I, ha I feel like I need to kind of fill some time, but I would say this. Uh, there's a reason Metastock's been rated number one in its price category for 25 years in a row. I mean, think about how long that is. Think about what a legacy that is. That's our Metastock DC option, best in price category. That award is literally is the readers of Stocks and Commodities magazine. The, the full name of the magazine is Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities. 